Georgie. And I read Gone Fishing, a novel in verse. It's about a boy named Sam, and he loves fishing. So one day when he and his dad decide to go fishing, his annoying little sister Lucy wants to come too. So when his dad says she can come, oh no, trouble for Sam. Will he really like Lucy going fishing with him and the adventures they'll take? Find out in Gone Fishing. I rate this book five out of five fish for its fun and adventurous things around every corner. I think you really like this book. Hi, my name is Ben, and I read the book The Great American Dust Bowl, written and illustrated by Don Brown. In this comic book style book, readers learn more about the dust storms that rolled across the prairie in April of 1935. Billions and billions of specks of dust rolled across the land creating darkness and fear. The drought lasted for more than three years, ruined crops, made people sick, and covered everything in dust. By the end of the 1930s, many people had fled from their homes because dust had destroyed their farms. Droughts return to the plains again, but we have never had another Dust Bowl. I give this book four and a half out of five stars because the story was interesting and the comic book style made it fun to read. Hi, my name is Suhani and I read a book called A Splash of Red, The Life and Art of Horace Pippin. Once there was a boy named Horace. He was born in New York on February 22, 1888. Horace loved to draw. When Horace went to school, he always drew pictures. That made the teacher really mad. When Horace got in eighth grade, his father died, so he had to quit school and start to work. Later on, there was a war between Germany and USA, so Horace joined in. During the war, Horace got shot on his right arm. To know how he dealt with his injured arm, you'll have to read this book. I read this book a five out of five because it has great emotions and tells you not to lose your courage, even in hard times. Hi, my name is Maya. The book I read today was The Boy on the Porch by Sharon Creech. The Boy on the Porch is about a young boy who was dropped off on the porch of John and Martha. John and Martha soon realize the boy, Jacob, taps everything he sees instead of talking. John and Martha give the boy, Jacob, lots of toys, including a paint easel, a guitar, a paintbrush, and paint. They realize that he is a great artist. Days go by, weeks go by, even months go by. One mysterious day, Jacob leaves. They never see him again, but adopt more children. Jacob never returns. What do you think will happen? I rate this book five out of five stars because of its great plot and character dialogue. If you like adventure, then you will love this book. Hi, my name is Joel, and I read the book Locomotive by Brian Foca. This book talked about trains. It showed and described people building the railroad. This book explained how the crew maintained the train. It talked about where a certain train went and stopped along its route. I won't tell you where the train ends up because you'll have to read it to find out. I gave this book five out of five stars for the beautiful watercolor illustrations, great vocabulary, and funny parts. Read it. Hi, I'm Tate, and I read this fantastic book called Ginger Snap by Patricia Riley Giff. This story takes place in 1944 during World War II. Janet is orphaned when her parents die in the car accident. Janet's brother, Rob, then becomes her legal guardian. Rob is a chef for the Navy and then goes missing in action. Jana finds a cookbook with a picture of a bakery on the front. But to Jana's surprise, the name of the bakery is Ginger Snap, Jana's nickname. And with a creepy voice guiding her, Jana decides to go from upstate New York to Boston, Massachusetts to find this bakery. While in Boston, Jana meets two siblings. Who is this ghost? Is Rob alive? Will Jana ever find family? Read the book to find out. I rate this book five out of five stars because it's funny, scary, and sad all at the same time. I think you'll really like it.
Hello, my name is Allison, and I read the realistic fiction book, Words with Rings, written by Nikki Grimes. This is a book written in verse. It starts with a young girl named Gabby, who is a daydreamer. She uses her dreams as an escape from her parents fighting. If you say dragon, she's off in another dream about fighting a fire-breathing dragon with nothing but a sword and shield. These dreams have started to affect her school life. Will she ever stop daydreaming? Will her parents ever stop fighting? Will she ever get her head on straight? You'll have to read this book to find out. I rate this book four and a half stars out of five stars. Read this book. Do you know any doctors? Any of your family members or friends? Hi, I'm Kaya. And I'm Emily. This is a story about a doctor, a rebel, and a hero of the Civil War. Mary Walker Wears the Pants is an extraordinary story, not just about this woman's style of dress. Mary Walker believed in just laws, fair expectations, and equal rights. That is why she wore pants and participated in other rebellious actions. I'm so glad we can wear pants these days. Yeah, it's not so flattering to walk by the monkey bars and see someone hanging upside down. In a skirt. Anyway, back then, only men were doctors, but if Mary could believe she could do it, she could do it. Mary went to medical school and became one of the first women doctors. That's great for her, but around blood, I get a little woozy. To achieve these amazing feats, Mary had to be stubborn, persistent, and have a lot of drive. With these qualities, she managed not to only go to medical school, but she became the first woman assistant to the U.S. Army. I don't know if I could be that brave, so how come this hero and face such a wrongly issued punishment? What punishment? Did you finish the book? Yeah, I'm just kidding. Okay. But seriously, if you want to find out what happens to Mary Walker, you better read this historic and captivating tale. We give this story four to five stars because nothing's perfect, but it comes pretty darn close. So, give, give this britches book a trousers try. Hello, my name is Monroe, and I read the book White Fur Flying by Patricia McLaughlin. The book is about a family with two little girls named Alice and Zoe. Alice loves to tell stories and is talking nonstop, but Zoe, on the other hand, is the narrator of the story. The family rescues Great Pyrenees dogs and keeps them until they can find a good home. Their dad is a vet who sometimes brings home stray animals too. One day he brings home an African gray parrot named Lena. Lena's favorite sentence is, you can't know. One day new neighbors move in across the street. Their names are Mr. and Mrs. Croft. They are taking care of their nephew, Philip. One day, Alice and Zoe's family takes in a new puppy named Jack. He is shy at first, but when Jack meets the neighbor boy, Philip, Jack immediately loves Philip. One rainy night, Zoe wakes up to hear her parents leaving. Her dad is going to the clinic, and her mom is going out after Jack. He had gotten out in the night. Moments after their mom leaves, their neighbor, Mrs. Croft, burst in sobbing and wet from the rain. Philip had run away. He must have heard me talking about his parents' troubles and thought it was his fault. Did they find Jack or Philip? Did they run away together? Or was it just a coincidence? I give this book five out of five stars because it had some good parts and some also slow parts. But overall, it was really good and exciting. So I say read this book. Hi, my name is Aaron, And my name is Micah. We read, we read Sugar, Sugar by Jewel Parker Rhodes. Ten-year-old Sugar lives on River Road Plantation by the banks of the Mississippi River. Slavery is over, but working all day in the sugarcane fields is its own kind of slavery. She won't even eat sugar. Her mother is dead, and many of her friends have gone north to find work. One day, while playing with her forbidden friend, Billy, the son of the white plantation owner, he tells her, the Chinese are coming. His dad has hired workers from China. When will they come? What will the Chinese be like? The Chinese workers come bringing their own culture and stories with them. Sugar makes friends with them, even though the former slaves are suspicious and distrustful of the strange new people. Sugar brings everyone together and learns that different kinds of people can be friends and work together. We rate this book four out of five stars because we didn't like some parts of the ending. But we still think you should read this book. Check it out. I'm Connor. I'm Corbin. I'm Henry. And I'm Ryder. 
We read the book Parrots Over Puerto Rico by Susan L. Roth and Cindy Trumbull. The parrots of Puerto Rico are driven to the brink of extinction by human hunters and pets. They are also threatened by wild hawks. Once only 200 parrots were left in the world, now humans are helping the parrots of Puerto Rico come back. If you like reading about saving endangered animals, this is the book for you. We enjoy this book and rate it four and a half stars out of five. Read, read it! it.